What's up guys, Connor behind the camera with guns and stuff and what I'm going to talk about today is I have a Streamlight ProTac Rail Mount 2 here in the box. I have one on my rifle and pretty much just going to be a quick unboxing overview. I'm going to try to fit a lot of information to a quick video here. So let's get right into it. So before we go any further, I want to give you guys a very quick 30 second crash course on Lumens versus Candela. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. So. Lumens pretty much measures the total amount of output of visible light or brightness at the source. So pretty much what Lumens is, is how much output of light is coming out here. Candela pretty much measures, not really the distance it goes, but the focus of that a flashlight will project. So think of a floodlight where you turn the light on and it just kind of puts light on everything. Whereas a light with a high Candela is going to have one nice solid beam pretty much right where you put the flashlight, if that makes any sense. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So first things first, something very important that a lot of people do at the end of the video is talk about the price. I'm going to say that very first, very foremost. This light I got online for $114 off of Amazon. This weapon light, same exact model. I have two of them. I'm putting this on my scar. This exact model, same exact thing. I got this in town for $120. So $114, $120-ish, uh, depending where you look. So that is the price. So pretty much this light is advertised as 625 lumens on the high beam. So there is a high beam and there is a low beam on this. So we're gonna talk about both. Uh, the high beam produces 625 lumens, 22,000 candela, uh, 297 meter beam is what is advertised, and a two hour battery life. Now. That might not seem like a lot, but when this is on high beam, it's very bright. It's pushing out a lot of a lot of power. So, uh, so what the two stands for is this stands for two CR one two three batteries. So one two three batteries power this, and it's a, a two hour battery life. So if it could somehow be more, that would be better. But that's just not the case. So now there is a low beam, which is sixty lumens, two thousand candela an 89 meter beam and 21 hours of battery life. So uh, I'm gonna actually turn the light on here so you guys can see, that's the high beam. I'm gonna be going outside and inside for you guys. But that is the, uh, that's the light, all its power. I know I'm only doing it on a table, but that's the light, two CR123 batteries. The length is about five inches and it weighs about five ounces. Now, something that you guys can see right off the bat is this is not the most slim light there is on the market but it's, it comes in at a good at a good price. So you're not gonna pay surefire price, but for that, you're not gonna get a very small, slim, uh, slim light here. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the unboxing. I'm just gonna show you all the goodies that come with it. Uh, obviously, it's a nice packaging. It shows you all the you know big selling points on the side and all that good stuff, so we'll open it up. Pull out the weapon light. And that's right here, you have the weapon light. One thing I wanna add is this is, a, this is a standard 1913 Picatinny mount. So this will go right on to any, I mean, as you can see here, I got a, a magazine, a Magpul Picatinny rail there, so clips right on. One thing to note about this is this mount, the 1913 Picatinny mount will come off and you can mount Surefire Scout mounts to it. So it's not just, just a 1913 rail mount, which is definitely awesome. A little bit more versatility there. Comes with two batteries. Go ahead and pop these in. And also, right on the mount, or the light right now, is the, the on and off tail cap with no pressure switch. So, as you can see, it is O-ring sealed, so it's going to be waterproof. Put the batteries in, make sure it works. So there's, that's 624 lumens. I'm sorry, 625 lumens. So that's the light, batteries are already in it. You're gonna get a few more goodies here. You get the pressure switch, the tail cap pressure switch here. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you're gonna get, so this is to mount the pressure switch to a, a Picatinny rail. So what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a little Allen key with some screws. This is to actually mount the pressure switch to the Picatinny rail mount if you wanna do it that way. Comes with a little adhesive, double-sided adhesive strip. Pretty much what this is for is you can put the pressure switch on the adhesive, and then what I would imagine is you can zip tie it to the rifle so it's not gonna move at all. That I did not do that on the 6920 here. As you can see, it's kinda loose. I probably should have done that first. So you got long zip ties to wrap around the rifle. 
small zip ties, which I would imagine is to hold the uh, hold the pressure switch cable down to tie it to something so it's not flopping all over the place. So pressure switch, weapon light, adhesive, and the uh, Picatinny mounts for the pressure switch, and the zip ties. So now one thing I want to talk about, which is super cool, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way here, move it off to the side, is the 10 tap programming. So right now this comes from the factory as it's on constant and if you press it twice fast it's going to strobe. That's awesome, that's a good feature, but what if you want to go to something else? This has three programmable settings in it. So all you're going to do is you don't want to click it on, so you don't want to do that, you just want to tap it on. You tap it ten times and it's going to change to a different programming. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the tenth one you're going to hold it down. Now the light just powered off, so now it's on high only. So I'm going to push it twice, it's on high only. It's not strobing. So that's awesome. Constant on. Another setting is low and high. That's what I have it on my rifle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hold it down. Okay, so now when you turn it on, it's going to be a low beam. Push it twice, it's a high beam. So again, low beam, high beam. So the low beam, this is the 60 lumen setting. Push it twice, you can have a temporary on. So that's awesome. Low, high, you want to program it back to default. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we're back at strobe. So on, double tap, strobe. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're going to go to high only. And then do it one more time, you're going to get low low and high beam so real quick I'm gonna talk about the pressure switch pretty much what a pressure switch is it's a pretty much an on and off button that's off of the flashlight but it has to be attached obviously so this is pretty much an on and off switch the pressure pad here it will not stay on so if you click it it's just gonna it stays on as long as you have pressure on it so as you can see here I'm keeping my thumb on it now this is a on and off button so you can click it and it'll stay on Click it back off just like that and also you can do your you know double taps and stuff to get the different programming but a little bit about the pressure switch there one thing I really like about this this streamlight is it comes with a lot of different ways you can set this up the zip ties the tail cap here with the on and off button the pressure switch the adhesive um, adhesive strip Picatinny mounts it comes with a lot of different options there so that's definitely pretty cool so coming in at hundred and twenty dollars I think the streamlight uh, Pro tack rail mount 2 is definitely a good option. You get a lot of different ways You get a pressure switch a tail cap you get a few different ways to mount it You get that 10 tap programming So, you know if you kind of want to you know put it to whatever you want you can do that You got the the strobe with high high only and then low and high There's really only three really cons I can think of about this light uh, Number one is it's made in China. So it's not made in America. That'll turn pe turn some people off right away Number two is it's a bigger light, so it's not very streamlined. It's not very, you know, it's not very small. I personally, I don't really have a problem with it. That's just another, that's just a con that I thought people could see. And then another one, this one's kind of weird. So you have to lay your rifle down on whatever side the pressure switch isn't on. Because if I lay it down on this side, pretty much the light will go on. Because it's on that pressure switch. So yeah, there, the light's on. So you got to lay it down on the light or on the side with the light. So that's just something that I've noticed with using it and it also depends where you mount your pressure switch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go show you the beams outside in the dark. We're gonna be outside and inside just to give you guys a, you know, a few different looks at the beam. All right, so real quick, I'm outside. I have the light here. I'm gonna shine the low beam at the wall. There's a white, just a white wall. I am outside. This is looking at a house. So there's that. As you can see, there's a pretty focused hot spot there, and then also around it. The camera's really not picking it up that well, but kind of a more like a peripheral type light where, uh, I guess, a floodlight type thing. It's not really picking it up too well, but let's go to the high beam. Obviously, it's a really bright, bright hot spot there, and you can see the edges there, kind of like a floodlight type deal. I don't really know what to call that, but just the overall beam shines uh, it's pretty, pretty wide. And then next we're going to go look at some woods a little bit farther away and see how it changes. Alright guys, so I'm about 20 yards away from a big wooded spot that I'm at. One thing I want to add is 
I tried this before I started filming and the, the iPhone camera that I'm using is just not picking up nearly as much light that's getting uh, projected from the light. So it's really not doing it justice, but I'm out here so I'm still gonna get some footage. So I'm on low beam right now and you can barely even see the woods, but with my eye, I can see it perfectly fine, which is kind of a bummer. So now we'll go to high beam. You can see it right there. That hot spot's pretty intense. You got a little bit of like kind of floodlight around that. And like I said, I can see a lot more with my eye than the camera can see, which is kind of unfortunate, but still just to give you guys a little something to, to kind of go off of. All right guys, so we're indoors now with the ProTac Rail Mount 2. We're looking down the hallway, I have a lot of white doors around me, so pretty much why I mention that is because anytime you're messing around with a high lumen or high candela light, when you're looking at white, pretty much that light's gonna reflect off of the white, and it's pretty much, it's not gonna really temporarily blind you, but it's just gonna kinda mess with your eyes for a few seconds, it's gonna be really, really bright. So something to keep in mind, so I'm going to turn the light on here. This is the low beam. So obviously there's white doors looking down a hallway. Low beam, no problem. Now we're going to go to the high beam. You can see that that hot spot is way, way intense. It's pretty, especially looking at something white. So there's all around us. This is the high beam, so we'll go to the low beam one more time. We're gonna go to high beam. Pretty bright. Again, that hot spot, it's it's pretty hot. So you're definitely not gonna have any problems filling filling the room with light. If you're in a pitch black room, this is a hallway. I mean, even if you're in a small room or a big room, you're gonna have no problems at all filling that room up with light. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it helped.